The latest now from President Trump. He spoke to reporters last night trying to calm the firestorm set off by his vulgar comments about African Haiti in that Oval Office meeting on immigration. Trump now denying those words, defending himself against charges of racism. And our senior White House correspondent Cecilia Vega is here with the story. Good morning, Cecilia. Hey, George. Good morning, too. After ignoring reporters' questions about whether he is a racist on this Martin Luther King holiday, President Trump now has an answer. President Trump overnight forced to answer the one question he cannot seem to escape. No, no, I'm not a racist. I am the least racist person you have ever interviewed. At his golf club in Florida, the president denying he made that Oval Office slur. Did you see what various senators in the room said about my comments? They weren't made. But on this Martin Luther King holiday, the fallout from those comments growing. Civil rights icon, Democratic Congressman John Lewis, not holding back. I think he is a racist. I don't think there's any way that you can square what the president said with the words of Martin Luther King Jr. The president's allies in that room deny he used that vulgar word to describe African countries. I'm telling you he did not use that word, George, and I'm telling you it's a gross misrepresentation. But multiple sources who were also there tell ABC News he did. And even the White House doesn't deny the president said he would rather see more immigrants from countries like Norway than Africa. Now hanging in the balance, a deal to save those so-called dreamers, undocumented immigrants brought to the U.S. as children. Outraged Democrats are demanding DACA be part of a package to avoid a government shutdown. The deadline is Friday. President Trump blames them for blowing up the deal. Honestly, I don't think the Democrats want to make a deal. I think they talk about DACA, but they don't want to help the DACA people. And this morning, a new fight over the president's relationship with North Korea's Kim Jong-un. The Wall Street Journal quoted President Trump as saying they have a good relationship. But two days after that interview was published, the White House fired back, both sides releasing a recording. I probably have a very good relationship with Kim Jong-un of North Korea. The White House claims the president said, I'd have a great relationship, not that he actually does. The president slamming the paper. Well, the Wall Street Journal, as you know, quoted totally wrong. All right, so also talking to reporters there in Mar-a-Lago, the president said that he didn't know whether there will be a government shutdown on Friday. He said there shouldn't be because, quote, if there is, our military gets hurt very badly. It is true that certain military programs like salaries would come to a halt if the government runs out of money. But, guys, the military would not shut down. That's good to know. And, by the way, Cecilia, it's great to have you in New York. Great to have you in studio. And it was awesome to see you anchoring in World News. Thank you. Weekend. I love being here with you guys. Don't go, don't, don't go anywhere, okay? Okay. The whole I'm show. Right. Thank you, Cecilia. <laughs> Bringing John Avalon, editor in chief of the Daily Beast, right now. And let's just take a step back right here. Remarkable moment. An American president on Martin Luther King weekend forced to defend himself against charges of racism. It is surreal, but given this president's record of comments, it's not surprising. You know, history says that when presidents are in the business of denying something, Nixon, I'm not a crook, it's not a strong look. Saying I'm not a, the racist or I'm the least racist person you've ever seen, I think the American people probably look at Donald Trump, and that's not the bar he's clearing right now. He's, gotta... he's had to answer questions like this before, but this latest episode, of course, coming out of that Oval Office meeting on Thursday, and kind of amazing what you're seeing right here. Initial reports, the White House did not deny that the president said right. these words, these two senators, Tom Cotton, David Perdue was on my program yesterday, didn't remember. Now they say the president didn't say it, and a cabinet member says she doesn't remember. We've got a miracle here, George. Amnesia is curable, and senators looking to protect themselves and their president. Um, look, this is cynical, because the White House didn't deny it. We had contemporaneous accounts from other senators who heard this before the reports. Uh, and now for Cotton and Perdue to say that, you know, they, the president didn't say it definitively, uh, that's they're, they're looking out for their own political interests, and it doesn't ring true in the least. And it certainly does complicate these entire debates over DACA, over immigration, impossible to see a deal, or very, very unlikely to see a deal on that before Friday. And that's a tragedy, because before the president's vulgar comments were reported, it was looking like there was a deal in the Senate. The White House may have had some problems on details, but this was the way deals are supposed to be done in the Senate. Both sides giving a little bit, looking like you can help some people in the process, and then the president's comments really derailing it, and, and it's, it's the dreamers who will suffer. Another tumultuous week. John Avalon, thanks very much.